Hey everyone, Gerard Scarpese here, Craft Hairdresser, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community. Continuing a series that I started last week, kind of about being inspired by 90s haircutting techniques. I keep hearing that the 90s is super trendy and I'm like, well, hey, that's perfect because that's my era. That's where I was trained and the background that I, you know, really started my career in. Last week, I went through kind of working from the inside out um, as you know, one of the 90s inspired techniques that really I think was important for me. Now I wanna to start to work on um, a combination haircut where we're gonna to start to use disconnection, we're gonna to start to use what we used, what we called freehand cutting, pointing and slicing, and we're also going to use a combination of wet cutting and dry cutting. Um, you can see this beautiful color here done by my friend Lupe Voss. Um, I can't tell you much about it other than she used the new Color Space product, so the color is fantastic here. Um, and it was deeper in the nape here, so I'm going to put in, as you can see, just a panel of graduation, and the graduation is going to be kind of rounded through and head hugging. Um, so let's start off here. The reason why I chose to work wet down here is working close to the head and working short with graduation especially on very straight hair like this, it can get a little pokey. Um, and then, you know, with graduation, you need a little bit more control, at least I know I do. Um, so you can see at first I cut off a little bit of the extra length at the bottom. Um, that just makes it a little easier for me. I still gave myself a little bit of room to play around, um, but I took off some of the excess length. Now I'm gonna come in with diagonal forward sections, using the guideline from the first side, and using point cutting, Going in, you know, going in one direction and the other direction here. It's something we really kind of, I can remember, you know, in the early 90s when we just kind of started to make this little change from cutting everything super clean and connecting everything to starting to play around with working with not only disconnection, but what we call freehand cutting, which just meant that the lines, you know, weren't cut clean or club cut or blunt. So super section, uh, super simple diagonal forward sections over-directed just onto the previous. Um, I like to stand off to the side to do this so that I can kind of look through the hair. Um, you know, I think body position, there's always more than one body position to execute something. But, you know, for me being a larger person in general, I find that when I graduate like this, if I can stand off to the side, look through the hair, I get better results. Just over-directing back to the previous, I'm not trying to build too much weight behind the ear. The weight's gonna come from the top. There's gonna to be a disconnected overhang that covers this graduation, perhaps not completely, but it will cover the graduation. You know, the point for this undercut is to really kind of, number one, bring out a beautiful head shape in this kind of bob shape. And number two, um, give it some, some drama and some, some movement and some peekaboo, especially with this color down here. So you'll see that as this develops. Just want to take a minute and say hello to uh, everyone out there, our audience today, Yvonne Duda is saying hello, as well as Zoe, uh, Matilda. Welcome everybody. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out. Hi hey friends, great to have you here. And you know, just making sure that I'm keeping the bottom in tighter and building the length on the top, and that's really what graduation's all about. You know, I can check that every once in a while with my comb to make sure that that bottom isn't buckling out. And I can see it visually that the bottom is shorter than the top, but I always kind of do like a comb test where I come through, and I, as I comb out, I make sure the bottom drops out before the top. I know that sounds simple, but I, I can't tell you how many times I've been working on graduation or teaching someone graduation where they actually end up with the bottom a little bit longer. Um, and it has a lot to do with finger position and just awareness, but you really need to focus on getting that bottom in tight. And again, sometimes just using the comb so that you can see what's happening. I wanna say hello to David Kingston, uh, as well as Joey Cupcake. Welcome everybody. Great to have you guys here. Joey Cupcake, I like that name, that's great. Sounds like fun. You gotta be a fun person if your name is Cupcake. I would Definitely. Yeah. All right, so you can see I didn't build up a ton of weight. I'm gonna come in now and I'm gonna look at the outline. I had left extra length here from the beginning. 
knowing that I would then kind of personalize it. And obviously on a real hairline, you want to have even, you know, that ability to play with it. Cause once you graduate it, you can never predict exactly what it's going to do unless you've cut that hair many times. So here, just kind of rounding off the whole edge, then using some scissor over comb and some more deep parallel point cutting. So again, the whole purpose was, you know, for, for me, I had to learn in the very early nineties, you know, very, very clean cutting. And, you know, sometimes it worked well and sometimes it didn't. Had, you know, it was very much, um, especially for me with haircuts like graduation, you know, I would always feel like it was too heavy um, or I would get weight lines. And, you know, when we started to be able to work into the hair a little bit more, it was just really what clicked for me. And, that, you know, from that point, the love of texture really developed for me. And I'm not saying that you can't do beautiful work without, you know, um, using point cutting. It's just, it's a personal thing. I just like it. I enjoy doing it. Um, and I just find it makes my haircuts kind of sing for me a bit more. So it's very rare that I do anything that doesn't have some texture work to it. Zoe is wondering if you would leave this step for the, leave this tip for the refining step. Um, you could, but you know, since I'm working kind of dry and I have hair that's going to cover this, I'd rather kind of get this where it needs to go now. It's a personal thing as well because the hair is going to fall over it. Um, and I really want to kind of see what it's going to do because it's quite visual. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to do in the, in the next stage. And I think if there's anything that's a little too distracting for me, um, it will be harder for me to dial it in. So really just checking through, looking for this slight kind of, I always just think of it like a half moon shape. You can see it through the comb there. And then really detailing it. You know, having larger hands, learning to work over comb to refine graduation made a big difference for me. Because it's kind of hard to get these big meat paws in close to the head. I've done okay, you know, and I've learned how to do it, but I've also learned how to use over comb technique to refine. All right, I will, I'll put some heat on this real quickly because the rest of it's going to be dry cut. So just a few seconds of new colors on the vest brushes available at Hairbrain Pro. Um, so we've got some fun colors for 2021. This kind of greenish color, we've got some blue and red. So Hairbrain.pro vest brush, uh, I think it's the most important brush in your arsenal. I think there are a lot of great brushes, but this is the one that I couldn't live without. It's a real hair cutter's brush. So here, just wrap drying, getting some of this heavy moisture out of this graduation. Really showing off that beautiful color from Lupe Voss. So while we're waiting for this to dry, what's the overall look you're going for? It's gonna be a bob. Surprise, surprise. Oh. You know, very, you know, very 90s inspired kind of bob uh, with disconnections and movement. It's It's got a lot going on. There's going to be graduation. It's going to be flat layering, concave layering. Uh, but it all comes together to make a very simple, lean and modern kind of shape. And, you know, I, even since, even though it's a 90s inspired thing, um, it's to me always looked very current. All right, now working into this next panel. And you can see, I did, because the hair is dry up here, I didn't do a lot of subsection or pre-sectioning because I think that um, it'll get all crimped up and, and it'll be just really challenging to work with. Letting that hair fall. I've come from the crown to the top of the ear, just trying to gently push this out of the way using the crux clips. These have this little rubber band on it. Um, I find these are more gentle for dry cutting, which is definitely a good thing. Now this panel is going to not connect to the first panel at all. This is definitely something we started playing around with a lot in the 90s. So judging the head shape coming from the lower crown area into the back of the ear. Trying to gently clip that out of the way. You know, very often when I work with dry cutting, I tend to keep the flat iron handy. Um, just because even the most gentle clip, it can disturb the roots a little bit. So I see I've got a little bit of pop in the corners. I'm going to turn the iron on um, I, and I'll let it heat up for a second while we establish this guideline. 
Okay, so, you know, the first thing I can do, I mean, I know I don't want this longer than the graduation. And just to make it easier to deal with, I'm going to come down here and just take off the excess length. You know, as long as uh, I'm not exposing the graduation in any way right now, this isn't going to be the ultimate length here, but it's just, especially when working freehand, it's going to be so much um, more comfortable to not have too much excess length to work with. So we just kind of pre-cut that off. Now we want to establish where this center guideline is going to be. And this is going to really determine a lot for the rest of the haircut. So I'm going to bring this guy out here. I can see where my graduation is there. Now I don't want to connect that. I want to disconnect it. Now we can play around with this. So let's just play around. I'm going to come out and leave it a little, like on the longer side, just enough that it would kind of hit the perimeter of the graduation. I think ultimately I'll take it shorter than that. But I'm just gonna start here. And I think if I turn around, you'll get a better angle, but let me just do this first cut here. Awesome, Lupe just popped on. Um, Lupe, we were just talking about your color. All right, so that's looking a little bit solid on the, on the, uh, the color line. We'll be able to deal with that in a minute. And again, this is, it's longer than I want it to be, considerably. But I just wanted to show you it can go in different different ways. I'm going to take this down a little bit more. And I learned a lot from that first section. I can see where Lupe has this beautiful color at the top. Um, I'm probably going to need to go in deeper in that area to really melt it or maybe use some slicing. All right, taking a little more length off. I said I would turn around and you'd get a better, a better example of what needs to happen here. Ultimately, I usually end up, you know, the way I like this shape, I usually end up about an inch and a half or two inches longer than the graduation. But I just wanted to show you that you can kind of play around with it and get different effects. So I always tend to find I go in a little deeper right above it. And in this case, I'll go in a little deeper right where this beautiful kind of smoky gray is. Just to release the, the weight line of the color. Yeah. Start to. You can use some slicing as well to release that color. And again, since I'm working dry and visually, I'm doing a lot of it all at the same time. Okay, next section, vertical. And you know what, now I want to start building a corner behind the ear um, so that I can have a connection to the side. So I'm going to over direct everything back, not all the way to the center, but to a flat or square wall. And that will give me enough without it being too heavy. And again, as I said, I know I need to take a little bit more off in the top. So going in deep with what we tend to call deep parallel point cutting, another very 90s kind of development. Starting to see that shape. Again. The graduation, now because of the disconnection, I'm sorry, because of the over direction, the disconnection gets greater and greater through the back of the ear, which we want that to happen so that we get an overhang that actually starts to create a bulb line into the sides or an outline. So in this case, I've ended up about an inch and a half of disconnection. Going in a little deeper at the top and at the bottom for parallel point cutting, but kind of keeping the meat in the middle. Having a little product handy as you're working dry, especially on the hair that's been kind of flat ironed. Just a little bit of a cream there. Put some moisture back in. Uh, Lori Baker is um, saying hello from Kansas and she's a 90 stylist and she is loving it. Great. I'm sorry, Kel, what are you asking? Uh, nope, nope, nothing. Everything's all good. All right, so continuing to over direct back straight and square and point cut, square line. Going in a bit deeper at the top with parallel point cutting. You know, on the ends, I'm doing more of a diagonal point cutting that takes the length away. You know, we were like, as I said, in the 90s, we really experimented, and I think kind of 
began to create the foundation of modern haircutting or what we see now as haircutting. Um, and, you know, a lot of it had to do with freehand and point cutting and really just discovering all the different, different things you can do. So here is where the disconnection is going to be the most from the top to the bottom. I continue, this is diagonal point cutting. It's usually pretty shallow in this case because I'm really just trying to get the shape in. So it's kind of a square shape that's been pointed into so it's not completely blunt. And go back the opposite way if I want to get a little more separation in there. And then going in more T to the finger and the top and the bottom. Awesome. Simon Best is saying hello and, uh, and hello to everybody who's tuning in and, and hanging out with us this afternoon. Great. Another great name. All great names are coming out. I wish my last name was Best. A little more cream here. Again, because it's so visual, you want to see what's happening as you're working. Awesome. Again, last section, over-directed back, cut square. You know, something we also played around with was cutting in the cone like this. I remember doing this a bit in the 90s. Obviously, it's lower tension and can be kind of fun. And sometimes I just mix it in there. So you can see there's a lot of extra covers here and that's gonna give me something to play around with behind the ears. Bring this up and over and you can see it's quite square. I'll turn around so you can kind of see. So I did a pretty good job controlling it. Now coming in again deeper. Parallel point cutting, deeper. A little kind of kick there from the iron, but you know, I'm just going to kind of work with it. I'll use some cream. Let's get some moisture in there. And even like let it start to revert a little bit. All right, now we're going to move over to the opposite side. I'm going to lower the mannequin a tiny little bit because now I'm going to work with my fingertips downside. I tend to kind of flip from side to side. Some people don't and you don't have to, uh, but it's just something that's kind of ingrained in me. There's my guide. Obviously soft guides are harder to follow than, than really clean guides. So you really want to make sure you're on. Come back a little bit deeper at the top and at the bottom. The bottom is where it just kind of will help it cup to the head and the top just to kind of help that color melt a little bit more. Coming back. Again, I can see my line here. I'll turn around this way. Maybe you guys can if you see from the guideline. I see the guideline right there. Again, sometimes we used to kind of have fun just using a comb. Try to keep that square. And ben Brown is popping in and, and saying hello. He's loving the color. Hey, yeah, great. Thanks to our friend Lupe. Yeah, we were we finally got to see our dear friend Lupe for the first time in 13 months now that we're all vaccinated. And, and, we, and we ransacked all of her color uh, mannequins. Gave, you know, a whole bunch of mannequins, which is pretty awesome to have some mannequins that have great color on them. It also makes for a great lesson for the audience when, when the color is a challenge, how, how we get around it. Totally, yeah. And in this case, I don't think the color is a challenge. It's just, you know, you have to customize if the hair has been colored um, and you're doing a creative cut, you just have to use pointing and slicing and kind of, um, or, you know, I could have also cut the top rounder if I wanted to stay technical, but then I think I would lose the essence of the shape that I'm going for. Because to me, it's very important to keep this area flat so that you're still getting that buildup of weight from the graduation. If I started to round this through, you would lose that stacked effect. And I didn't want to lose that at all. So, you know, I think technical haircutting, obviously I love, it's the foundation of everything I do. It's the foundation of what you're seeing here. Um, 
but sometimes you want to do something technically that, you know, you could say, oh, I could definitely, why not just round that top through technically and then the color would disappear, but you would also lose the shape. So sometimes you make some sacrifices to get an effect that you want, but it can get pretty philosophical about it all. So again, working over the comb, which I do a lot to go in deeper, get more separation. Almost using the whole length of my blade. This is my HB Pro Dry. Um, I, I, I like it for a lot of things. I mean, obviously I am dry cutting in this case, um, but I, I use it for a lot of things. And you know, it, what it does is it just kind of pushes the hair right off the bat. It cuts less of a sharp line which is what I'm going for here. If I want a sharp line, I'll use my uh, AG, which is our most kind of precise cutting scissor. All these tools are available at Hairbrain Pro. I'll give you guys a little uh, sneak peek. It's Hairdresser Appreciation Day on April 25th here in the US. So we're gonna have 20% discounts um, at the Hairbrain Pro store. So if you're interested in getting some new tools, this weekend's gonna be Good for you. All right, so you can see there's a disconnection there. I'm keeping that for the moment. How did this happen, this disconnection? You because just... this is square, and the underneath is more triangular or rounded with the head. So this is square deliberately, and this is rounded. That gives me hair to work with as I work into my blend on the side. So that's very, very deliberate. And you know, it's extra hair that I can work on as I start to work into the side. All right, one more panel for the back. I'm gonna go up a little bit higher now from the apex to the round of the head. I'm sorry, to the, to the back of the ear. And we're gonna to start to introduce another cutting technique here. Again, for me, a very 90s thing. Um, channeling or slicing, it's been quite a few different terms. You, know, you can see it's just kind of this veil of hair. Um, and again, based on the color, I'm gonna start to now work about a one inch wide section here. I don't want this to be too thin. I wanna pay attention to that natural separation at the crown though. And I've got about a one inch section. I'm going to hold it quite low uh, because if I start to lift it, it's, um, it's gonna take less of the weight out. And I'm gonna start so here's like my weight area, my weight line, even though it's not a line. I'm gonna start about an inch above that, opening and closing, and go about an inch past. And slowly, slowly taper this in. Again, these scissors are really great for this. It's really what they're originally designed for. Uh, true dry cutting scissors. This was considered like a dry cutting technique. Sliding, slicing, tapering, and working that in. Now, letting that separate, turn the scissor on the side so that you're a little bit more gentle and work a little bit further. Okay, again, as I do this, I'm gonna over direct these sections back each time to build that weight behind the ear for the transition to the side. So if this, this is a mirror, her nose is at the front, she's straight forward. This was brought straight back. It wasn't lifted too, too much. Although I am going to lift a little bit more as I work my way out. The more you lift, the more gentle the weight removal. So in the center, I was very low. That was my most aggressive. Lifting just a tiny bit more, that'll help you protect what's at the bottom of this section. I want to say hello to Travis Smith. He's tuning in and, and saying hello. He's liking your haircut, Gerard, your 90s haircut. Nice. Good to have you here, buddy. Coming straight back again. Same, lifting higher. So you might ask, why am I lifting higher? I'll turn this way. As I lift higher, the hair separates more. When I'm lower, it's more condensed and you'll cut through more. When I lift higher, I can protect some of the hair on the outside and be a bit more gentle. Now you'll notice, I also use a pinching technique. I find people sometimes struggle. They try to hold it traditionally and do this. Cal, step back so you can, 
You're kind of holding it traditionally and doing this, which it's totally possible. It just never felt right to me. So what I did is I just started to just pinch. I really, I like a lot of times pinching when I'm razor cutting or working free form. I feel like I have really good control and the body position alignment for me is so much better. Again, this is, you know, a small part. It's just this one little panel on the top. We've got a lot of construction going on beneath it. And then we've just got this kind of free form at the top. Again, last bit. Now, this one, just because how close it is to the outline, I'm gonna first kind of just technically cut some of it off. I'll explain that in a second. I wanna see, that's probably still too much, but I wanna make sure I've got, that when I'm free freehanding, I don't take too much away. Again, I've got plenty to work with in that area. And I wanna work on the top of the hair a bit. And just kind of quite gentle. Always, you know, just trying to keep extra weight right here, right now. That's basically, that won't always stay there. But at this stage in the haircut, it will. All right, now repeating on the opposite side. Awesome. Vic is loving it. Um, she's saying that uh, she's learning so much from watching you. Oh, good. I'm glad. You know, guys, if you have any questions, you know, obviously I can just kind of ramble on. I love haircutting. I've been doing it for over 30 years now. Spent a lot of that time teaching. Um, but questions make it, even for me, just more interesting. You know, I'd rather kind of see what you guys are thinking and see if I can answer your questions. Your thoughts on 90s hair as well. And uh, Brian Waldron is saying hello. Hey, Brian, buddy. Hope you're doing well. You know, I feel like, you know, I've been obviously through 20, uh, 19, 20, through 2020, um, you know, I connected with a lot of you guys again because we were doing lots and lots of education. And I feel like we're kind of coming out of it here, at least in the US and definitely in California. We're at some of the lowest, uh, you know, infection rates or whatever that we've had in a very long time. So feeling positive and feeling like we're going to get back to the real world. I'm wondering. You know, how many of you guys are ready for hands-on classes, for shows? Quite a few of the big shows have started to schedule their dates and they've asked Hair Brain, you know, if we want to be involved. So, you know, I'm wondering what people are thinking. So let us know. Are you ready to go to shows? Are you ready to take hands-on classes at shows and go to main stages and do all that fun stuff? All right, here, another form of slicing, working just kind of from the inside out. Uh, many different names. I, I like the name kind of controlled slicing because you're really controlling the direction here. And again, opening it up. Try not to lose any of that length there. I want something behind the ears to work with. But again, working with the color and just working to create texture. Well, and again, that's what these scissors are incredible for. I mean, you can kind of really point cut with any scissor, let's be honest. But this really makes all the difference, the way that the blade pushes the hair. Brian is mentioning that he's opening up uh, in downtown Orlando, both a salon and a music venue. He says to wow. bring HB down. Uh, Waldron, I, I yes, correct. He up in more northern, so he must have re, uh, resituated himself. Relocated? Part of the world, sounds like it. All right, awesome. so now we've got this whole front. Still got this disconnection here. One of the things I love to do to make this kind of relate is take a section from the, from the parting and curve it around all the way into the back. This way kind of in one fell swoop, I can get a nice, a nice visual and, connect, and connective between the back and the front. Again, you can see a few like little little bumps uh, from the clipping. It's always gonna happen when you work with dry hair and clip it. Um, sometimes I'll just put a little product in. Sometimes I'll run the iron back over it. Really just kind of depends. But as long as it's not like creating a crazy weird like cowlick or something, I mean, as long as you're not cutting it super short, which is why I did the graduation more wet. All right, so now looking at this, 
I really want to just kind of visualize where I want this to go. So I can start to deal with some of this overhang a little bit at a time. So sculpting that in into where I want the length to eventually sit. You can see that sitting over the graduation in this area. All right, so now I want to continue that. I'm gonna make sure the head's in a fairly natural position here. I'll work with the wider side of the comb, so I'm very natural with my tension. Release some of the tension here and continue that slight angle forward. Not extremely steep. I mean, obviously that's up to you and your eye and what your guest is looking for. For me, I've never been a huge fan of extremely A-line shapes. It's just um, what, I, what I find complimentary or not complimentary, but that's me. It's up to you. And more than anything, it's up to your client and what they like. So if someone really loves something extremely A-line, I'll probably be happy to do it for them. And with this very front, because I'm kind of working off of almost a center parting, I want to make sure that this hair is brought all the way over towards the side of the cheekbone so that I don't round off the front. So I actually hold it in my hand and direct it over and blend it in. Cut it kind of where it's going to be worn. I'll put a little bit of elevation and rotation on this as well. For what reason? Softening it, lightening it. Again, I, you know, I wanted to get the balance in, so I was, I kept my point cutting pretty shallow at first, and now I can see where it's heavy and where it needs a little bit more lightness and refinement. So we can start to see that coming through. It'll probably get a little lighter as we work. I'm gonna take one more section for an outline. Start to see what's happening with this color as it drops over. Why did you choose to go a little bit deeper in, in the hairline? Uh, I wanted, you know, enough of an outline. Typically you want like at least two to three fingers above the ear before you start to do anything inside, or it could get a little weak on the edge here. I might even go further than this, you know, it's, um, I was going to do some, some layering above this point, but I could also maybe do some freehand. I'm just gonna kind of look at it and decide which way I wanna go. I definitely don't want this to be, you know, you could continue to work all the way through and just blend your whole outline in this way. If for some reason you wanted that front really kind of heavier, much heavier than the back. I mean, you know what? I might as well just do it and then play with it from there. Like if I drop what's left down, I could easily just continue to work this in. Definitely is going to flow better with a little elevation, but just being constantly, you know, until I feel like it's exactly where it needs to be, I'm always going to be careful right behind the ear where I want to get that bob line. But you so see, you could continue if you wanted to have that more one length feeling in the front, you could just like Boom. I'm going to definitely take more out and probably put some, some layering through the, through the sides. But this is going to come off anyway, so this will just make it easier for me. Abibu is loving the color. We do too. Lupe did an awesome job. Yes, Lupe Voss, our dear friend. First time seeing us is someone that we would see on the weekly for probably the last 15 years. And then COVID just kind of shook up and fucked up everybody's life, right? So we didn't see each other for 13 months. In person. We, we, In, did, we, we kept oh, our yeah. FaceTime up pretty, pretty well. Yeah. So even before I layer it, I just want to make sure that my outline, because, you know, I don't want to have to go back and do too much extra work. Um, I have been kind of refining and getting the shape in as I go. So I want to make sure the outline is loose enough. It's just definitely a 90s thing where you can kind of get the hair 
flip it, bend it over so that you can, especially if you're doing parallel point cutting, you can then follow the fan of it. It's a great way to just loosen that up. Hold this stuff on the top, grab it, fan it out. That doesn't look like it needs too much. Maybe a few of those longer pieces can come off. Just kind of going over the whole edge. You know, I think, you know, again, back to the original idea here of what's happening. For me personally, and I think for a lot of my companions in haircutting, what we discovered in the 90s was to break rules. And that, you know, we first learned how to really follow all those rules, which I, to this day I still really believe in. I would never want to see anyone, you know, even in their first, you know, couple of years of cutting hair, just doing stuff like this. Um, I know it seems sexy and fun, but I, you know, if I could, I would say, you know, just think of this as aspirational and really focus on doing things, you know, as clean and as balanced as you can, as fundamental as you can. It's, you know, it's like building a, a structure, a building. The deeper the foundation is, the taller you can build. You know, if you want to build a hundred stories, the foundation goes down like 10 stories into the ground. You know, you don't build a hundred story building and just have like no basement. You know, it doesn't just start right there on the ground level. So again, you can see one example of what this would look like a little bit weightier. Um, now, I just want to change it up a little bit. And I want to just layer through here a little. Not completely though. I want to take a little pie section, both for the color. Same thing, I'll, I'll keep this little pie section. Here's the parting, here's half of a pie. We'll get that out of the way. And then we'll think of this like as an undercut for the side. I'm gonna bring this hair up. I'll start at the front, since that's such a crucial point to make sure I don't lose that. And I'm gonna bring this hair right up towards the ceiling. And I'm gonna to start to kind of break off this corner. This is gonna make a real big difference on this side. I mean, again, you may have liked it heavier and your guests might like it that way as well, but I always try to get things to be a little bit more form fitting. And so that's what's happening here. And then I'm just keeping that little band on the top that I can work with freehand. And you see, I even like what it's doing with the color there. Cause again, it's exposing the dark base. And it's also getting that hair to have more of like a nice bevel to it. So you don't just have like a, that excess length coming over. Now, as I get into the back, I'm going to over direct the hair forward. So it will soften the corner again a little bit. Take a little, again, this is directed forward towards about the middle of the ear. And again, we're just breaking off the corner. Michael Kelly from Scotland is saying he's still cutting his, uh, his friend's hair like this. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't, I don't think this kind of cutting ever went away. I just feel like it, we really kind of started doing it a lot in the 90s. It's evolved, it's devolved, it's become simpler, it's become more complicated. It really depends on the person. Let's be completely honest here. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, just when you're doing these lives all the time, sometimes you think, well, what's a theme that could keep me interested and rather than like, so last week they said, oh, let's, you know, I keep seeing all this stuff about 90s haircuts and 90s style. And I said, well, let's really examine, at least let me examine, and hopefully other people will be interested in what I'm examining, um, what the 90s meant to me, what were the things that I took away from it. All right, what I did there was casual, but so important. Line, layers, in between means there's a corner, okay? I'd say it's probably one of the things that for me makes my haircuts go from good to great is to know the result of um, combining techniques and to know where there are corners that perhaps aren't adding anything to my haircut, you know? If there's a corner somewhere, do I need it deliberately? Does it add to the shape or does it take away from the shape? Does it take away from the styleability and flexibility of the shape? Working the line a little bit more now. I 
and just really sculpting through. I think I've taken this where it needs to be for the moment. Remember that little pie section? I want to drop that guy down. And you know, I like that being a bit more one length than the rest of the shape. Again, a very 90s thing, yeah. Um, but maybe I'll just, again, use a little bit of that slicing. Hey, let's face it, man, the 90s were great for hair cutters. Just kidding, they were great for me. So just slicing a little bit off the top of that, but keeping that piece disconnected. All right, if you missed it, now you can see it on the opposite side. Slightly smaller area, but the same idea. Uh, Lola's loving the haircut, the stylist classic, and nice to see a different technique. Awesome, Lola. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us. You know, thanks for mentioning that. I will say for me, um, I've done my fair share of weird hair in my career, where at the end it was like, you know, why would anybody wear that? And you say, well, it's art, you have to understand. And I just, as I've gotten kind of older, I want to say more mature, I, I don't really like or enjoy weird hair. I like to do simple things, but in perhaps a way that stimulates me, stimulates the client. So, you know, yes, it's the 10,000th bob I've cut this year, um, but there's a reason, you know, I mean, there's a reason. Hopefully I've cut every single one a little bit differently. So again, first working that line through from the back, giving myself plenty of extra crawl space. You know, just kind of sneaking up on it, a little over direction. Little over direction, very, very slight angle. You know, to me, the most perfect A lines are at the, the line of the jaw. Anything steeper than the line of the jaw, just for my eye. It's not right or wrong, it's just establishing what, what works for your eye. Um, you know, we kind of call it the balance. Using the fingers here and continuing through. That curved section, it just the, the benefit here is it allows me to go right from the parting all the way through and in one section kind of get the flow of my line in. And, you know, just to keep it, I'll do exactly what I did on the other side. I'll take probably about three curve sections, work my outline in with elevation and freehand, then do a little undercutting of that kind of layering. So here I was elevating a little bit more. You know, elevation will create graduation. Graduation will create softness in this case so that the line isn't as blunt or heavy. Again, just being sure with that front piece to cut it in front of the ear, behind the apple of the cheekbone. You know, if I cut it out here, uh, when that hair dries, the front of it, I mean, it is dry, but when that hair is styled, the front of it can look rounded off, like you'll lose that if I cut it here. Um, if you have a little too much, well, that's less of a problem because, you know, you can kind of whittle it down. Going a little deeper. You know, you've got different types of precision that happen when you work this way. Um, you know, you go, you've got your shape, obviously your shape's much more shattered, but the amount, the depth, the angle of the scissor, the amount that you go into the hair, it's a whole nother kind of form of precision that, you know, some people appreciate and some people don't. But I mean, it's easy to remove more weight on one side, less on the other, to create a different direction with your scissor or razor. So it's a different form of precision. You know, here we're, we're still kind of geometric. I mean, you know, there are some forms of cutting that I do that I don't feel have any geometry to them at all. Um, but for me personally, every type of cutting I do has precision to it. Even when I try not to. <laughs> you know, sometimes I've had like a wig or something that I've had to cut and you want to make it look very DIY or, you know, just like something. And I just, I can't get away from it. It's so ingrained in me. Okay, last piece for the outline here. 
Again, I know a lot of this is going to get um, changed, but if you did want to just kind of stay with a heavier shape in the front and didn't want to do any of the undercutting or freehand, you could. You get a, you know, a nice shape through the back and then you get weight in the front. Something kind of like that. Might be a little more refining to get it just right, but you kind of have like that vibe to it. Where what I'm gonna do is just take another half of a pie on this side of the parting. So that's what I mean. If that's our parting, I just kind of took a pie out. Works beautifully with the color. It's one of, you know, I've worked so many, we never obviously discussed this at all. Lupe did this for, I don't know, something completely different. Um, but I think we've worked together so much that we think about head shape the same. And that really affects placement, you know? Yes, if you tune in, if you find her, scroll back and find her video from yesterday. She talks a lot about it. Uh, might be good for you guys. Yeah, yesterday Lupe did a, a Facebook Live right here. Lupe Velocity. Full uh, of tips. I think the best colorist in the world and also the best friend in the world. Um, and she did an incredible job yesterday. And she's every Thursday for the next few weeks. We'll be here on HP Live. And then hopefully I'll get the mannequins and I'll be able to cut them. All right, so as I did on the other side now, starting at the front, because I want to make sure I keep that corner coming up, taking off the internal weight here. And starting to lighten. As I get towards the back, everything past the middle of the ear will just get over-directed to the front and get taken off. So it won't change the back too much, but it will break the corner. See, like just this little bit here. Now, I definitely think I was a little more light-handed in my texturizing on this side than I was on the first. So I don't wanna start boring you guys and being here too long, but I'm gonna go through one more time here and make sure that I've got a good consistency. And then all that's left, I think, is uh, to do a little slicing on that top piece. And we'll have this haircut done. Done and dusted, as we used to say. slicing in right now. I didn't really check for balance. I don't have a mirror here, so I've just been kind of hoping using the facial structure. All right, pretty good. My second side has a little bit of extra length at the bottom, which is good because I haven't finished the outline yet. So that feels pretty good. Again, this is what we're looking for. This is the first side, and then I'll be able to refine both sides of the outline together. So what's left to do here, I drop down that last bit. Gonna work in with some slicing. And I think this side needs a little bit more, just the way that the hair falls, and the way the color falls. On the one side, I just really kind of did the very front. But this, and it also has to do with the parting, not to get too much into fundamental theory, but you know, the light side of the parting, um, when you have internal shape, will tend to look heavier because the hair has less of a distance to travel. Our girl Raina is uh, tuning in and saying hello, made in color. I thought you might like this one, Raina. Yeah, kicking some kind of uh, fun freehand technique here. Very inspired by, you know, I think what we really kind of started to play around with in the 90s. At least I know what I started to play around with in the 90s quite a bit. And I think uh, a lot of my fellow hairdressers who've been around that long will remember. All right, so like lifting up, I can see the consistency here from side to side. And again, slicing, controlled slicing, opening, closing without closing all the way. Kind of pushing through to little extra bits, not much. Leia's loving it. Seems like the rest of the audience is too. All right, I'm sure someone's hating it. No, it's always, not yet, not it's yet. always somebody that hates something. Not it's, yet. It wouldn't be social media, right? 
No angry faces yet, Gerard. No, too bad. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit more of this cream in. And then, you know, the thing when you cut like this is, you know, there's no ending point where it's like, okay, I made my final connection. You know, you kind of have to keep looking at the hair and deciding, do I need to go in more? Did I go in enough to, you know, what exactly is the point? So this is a, a, a cream. It's actually quite, quite a heavy cream. Um, it's made mostly for pre, uh, silk presses, but I kind of like it because I like that like dirty look for this. It was also something that was very 90s. You know, we had this kind of, talk about lived in hair. It was when we first started to like not shampoo hair at all and tell people, oh, you know, don't use shampoo. Don't wash your hair for a month. It was kind of a thing, believe it or not. But product has gotten a lot better since then. So, you know, if you have curly hair or textured hair or colored hair, you can shampoo your hair and not lose it. But I digress. So looking for that balance. I like that little bit of haziness through the back here. You can see the deep base working into this angle on the side. So Gerard, would you consider this a bob? I would. You know, it's kind of a graduated bob, you know, because it's you see the stack. Um, I would, and I don't want, you know, I don't know what else you could possibly call it. I'm sure they'll, somebody could tell me something. All right, little finals here. You can kind of do a little checking, bring that back. You know, the, the, the one limitation of the hair being a little iron before you start cutting, I mean, you could send her back and get it rinsed down or whatever, but you are a little bit limited with the, the finishing texture. So you can say, just put those clips there just to help you check any like little final pieces. I mean, if you do this and cut off a lot of hair, probably something's not quite right, but that's just helping me check that angle. David is coming through with a name for us. Okay. Sure. A deconstructed, graduated bob <laughs> with an undercut. Okay. That's it. That's the winner. Also known as a bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it all depends on the person. I mean, some of us like to um, really kind of build on the vocabulary. And I have to say, I did at certain points in my career. But I don't know if I've just gotten old and jaded. I don't <laughs> like too many terms. <laughs> But I, I, I think it really does help. And for some people, it makes the biggest difference in the world. But for me, I just, you know. All right, I think I got it. I think you know, I'll probably did. leave these clips in. You know, maybe I could put a little heat on and just also try to, I mean, I always like this little kick here, you know, so I could try to sculpt this hair a little bit. It's probably not going to do much because it's flat iron so straight. Truth is, it was also, when Lupe gave it to me, it had like a curling iron set in it. And I was like, well, I don't want to cut it with a curling iron set. So I had a curling iron set that I then flat ironed out. So it's probably not going to do much. But there you have it. Another 90s inspired technique from a guy that learned how to cut hair in the 90s. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, I'll be coming back to you again next week with some more hair cutting. Peace out.